Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head back to Canada to the province of Ontario and the city of Hamilton once again and we're going to revisit a brewery who you've seen me review maybe four or five different beers from but I've always been impressed with the different things that we've managed to get over here. So for this one we're going to return to Collective Arts Brewing as I say for the fourth or fifth review that I've done from them and we're having a taste of IPA number eight. So this one comes in at 8% ABV and it's a double IPA hopped with Simcoe and Columbus from America and Malteri, which is a relatively new hop in the game from New Zealand. So this beer was released through uh, Say Stimberlag at Small Partiers on the 7th of June 2019 here in Sweden. But from what I gather from the Canadian reviewers that I've seen, this beer has been available since sometime around uh, December for them. I think they brew another batch of it to send over here actually, but the guys uh, who I was watching on the, the Canadian beer tube seem to be uh, really into this one and I was very impressed with IPA number 7 as well actually so very curious to see how this one turns out it's actually just very cool to be able to try some more Canadian beers for you here because for a long time it was very difficult to get any Canadian beer, it was like gold dust it was like I was saying when I was back in Scotland Irish beer was very difficult to get a hold of so hopefully this is another good one and as I say very cool to review some more Canadian beers and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Collective Arts before. No doubt I will add some more in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Canadian beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review especially if you're watching in Canada but it's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Collective Arts Brewing then on to my brewery notes here so as I mentioned to you earlier uh, Collective Arts Brewing are based in Hamilton in Ontario which is a little bit to the southwest of Toronto not too far from the the, the Michigan border or actually with America, but the company was founded back in 2013 by Matt Johnson and Bob Russell. So Matt comes from a marketing background and he'd worked in the beer industry for a number of years, notably with Moosehead, who are one of the big macro lager producers in Canada. Actually, the green label Moosehead was one of the first Canadian beers that I ever tried, but Bob comes from a, ban uh, a branding background and he owned his own businesses for a number of years as well. But the brewery are based in the former brewery of Lakeport Brewing Company, which is leased from the Hamilton Port Authority, and they share this facility with Nickelbrook Brewing and collectively the brewery itself is known as the Arts and Science Brewery. The current brewmaster at the company is Ryan Morrow and he's also the brewmaster for Nickelbrook Brewing for whom he's worked since 2006. But the whole idea behind this brewery was apparently to bring together like local artists, musicians and filmmakers and photographers and stuff like this through the sociability of craft beer and that was why they went for the name Collective Arts. So if ever you go to the brewery you'll find lo lots of paintings, lots of photographs and things like this all for sale and they've got lots of nice kind of live music shows and things like that on the weekend as well and the beer that they produce is pretty damn good as well like I said I was very impressed with the IPA number seven that was I want to was it Enigma and Nelson Sovien that was in that one if I remember correctly or Halatau Blanc and Nelson Sovien um, something like that Halatau Blanc and Enigma it was a very nice grapey uh, but still quite fruity IPA. Um, so if you get the chance to try some of these beers in this IPA series that they're doing, I highly recommend that you have a look at them because this is a style that the brewery really are making their uh, their name in. And uh, conversely, if you are in Sweden, uh, I would recommend you check out the Radio of the Mothership. One of the best value IPAs that you're going to find in there at the moment, actually. About 30 crowns, uh, 35 crowns for the Radio of the Mothership, which is a really nice, solid uh, West Coast double IPA, in fact. So check that one out if you're watching. Watching, uh, from the Swedish side of the Atlantic Ocean but yeah really nice brewery this one all as I say very cool to try some uh, Canadian beers here because for a long time they were like gold dust uh, it was very difficult to get a hold of Canadian beers at all in fact so I'm really glad that we're finally getting some more of these over here in, in Europe so check them out if you get the chance but yeah that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now quite a new brewery in the grand scheme of things but definitely worth checking out if you get the chance so if you want to learn a little bit more check out the brewery website in the description below as always you can follow them on facebook and instagram and stuff like that and that'll keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery 
and all the latest beer releases. These guys are a fairly prolific brewery actually too. So um, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is an 8% double IPA. It's hot with Simcoe and Columbus from America. Simcoe, of course, we know is a big passion fruity hop, but quite a smooth hop at the same time. Columbus is a very popular bittering hop that gives you this really distinctive um, floral spiciness. But Malteria is a really... Um, quite new hop actually from New Zealand it was uh, I think it was released back in like 2015 2016 and it's supposed to give you a lot of passion fruity grapefruity quite strong tropical fruit notes in fact I was in New Zealand back in that must have been 2015 in fact and it was all Rewaka, Raka, Nelson Sovine things like that so this is a hop that I hadn't heard of despite my experiences uh, of the craft beer scene in New Zealand which were very positive incidentally if you get the chance go to New Zealand and try some of their craft beers as well because they are pretty damn unique I have to say but yeah let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then just a little quick look at the artwork for you before we open up kind of this reminds me of the, I forget what they were called in America, but there was a, an American candy that was always about marshmallow and things like that. It looks like some of these strange, almost adventure time type cartoons, in fact. Um, usually it says, uh, this one is by, the artwork on this one is by Chris Moran, who's from Saskatoon in Saskatchewan in Canada, which is one of the prairie provinces kind of in the middle of the country. Uh, if I remember correctly, but yeah, nicely presented beer this one. It's an American pint this, so 473 milliliters, uh, and this one was imported by Tom Beer Wines and Spirits RB in Örebro in Sweden, which is a little bit out to the west of Stockholm, but product of Canada, as we say, uh, and like I said at the start of the video, I do suspect they brew a different batch to actually export over here into Europe, but 473 milliliters, a US pint this one, so let's get it out and we will get on with the tasting. Really curious to see how this particular beer turns out, but I've always been impressed with the, uh, the different stuff that I've had from them so far. I think I've had Radio the Mothership, the IPA number 7, Brack, which was a collaboration with Steakberry, it's a sour beer that, and now we've got this one, so yeah. But as you can see with this beer, it's poured, if we hold it up to the light, a very nice hazy bright yellow. If I hold my fingers behind the glass, you can see this one is particularly hazy. It's not the haziest IPA that I've come across. There's a half finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head on this one. It's not even creamy, it is more of a perfectly white head this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you know, overall it looks pretty nice and nothing particularly surprising about this one when you consider that it is an IPA, it's a New England IPA quite obviously, but um, yeah, it looks pretty nice, not the haziest I've seen uh, and a more of a bright yellow colour than some of them can be, but nice looking beer, so we can't say really much more about the appearance, so let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Ooh, that's quite interesting actually. So yeah, <clears throat> nice little bit of passion fruity, grapefruity note from that one. I'm guessing that'll be the Malteri, but of course the Simcoe can give you a hell of a lot of passion fruit. This one's a very strong tropical fruit aroma, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I've always found that passion fruit and grapefruit are very strong in their tropical aromas. And you can really pick that up from this one. They've just got, oh, it's just almost a little bit darker than the likes of mangoes and pineapples and stuff like this. It's just a little bit less juicy, more of a kind of dark, almost sour aroma that you get out of it. But not sour in the same sense as, a, you know, like a balloon of ice or, a, or, or something like that, a wild ale. But yeah, nice, dark, strong, tropical fruit note to this one. Grapefruit, like I see, a little touch of grapefruit in there, mainly passion fruit. Maybe a, there maybe is a little touch of pineapple or something like that in this one, but not too much overall. A nice, quite strong, spicy floral aromaticity to this one. You can smell that it's not quite at its freshest, this beer. I'm guessing it's been sat in the, the warehouse for a month or two before they've managed to get into Seastown Bulaga. Unfortunately, that's one of the problems when it comes to the 
the uh, the nationalised system the, the that we have here in Sweden because the import companies will bring these beers in, they'll sit for a little bit before they can get them out to say Stembol Agat so we don't get them at their freshest but even as it stands it smells like a really nice beer there's a little touch of earthiness in there which I'll be guessing from the Columbus again you've got that distinctive spiciness also coming out of the Columbus too but mainly a juicy tropical fruity note out of this one a little bit of a a kind of wheaty note to it, a little bit of a biscuity sweetness. I don't pick up too much in the way of oats, but um, yeah, big tropical fruity you notes, know, passion fruit, grapefruit, maybe a little bit of of um, a kind of lemony, limey sharpness to it as well, to be honest, but mainly a nice spicy floral character and, uh, and other things going on in there too. So nothing, again, out with the realms of possibility with this beer in terms of it being a New England IPA. But the malt base does start to sweeten up the more and more that you smell of it. A nice, smooth, wheaty quality, a little bit of oatiness. And the biscuity sweetness, I think, just pushes its way out a little bit more the more and more that you smell of it. But as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. But we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the IPA number 8 from Collective Arts Brewing in Hamilton in Ontario in Canada. Very cool to be able to review some more Canadian beer for you. Let's get stuck into this one and see how we get on. A double IPA at 8% ABV. Slanja Skull. Yeah, that's pretty nice, I have to say. Straight away, this one just kind of goes for it. Um, the first impression that I have of this beer is that it strikes me as almost a little bit of a hybrid between the um, the New England IPA and the West Coast IPA. There is a little bit of that slightly stronger malt base in there, just a little bit of a kind of caramelly, biscuity malt base. Um, so that works really nicely. As you've heard me complain about in a couple of the videos recently, I do miss the, um, the, the sort of caramel and biscuity malt that you would normally get from a West Coast IPA. So this one, while it does lean towards the New England side of things, it does have a little touch of what you would want from a West Coast IPA. So that makes it a little bit interesting, I think. It could be the fact that it's, I think it's just been sat in the can for a little bit in the, the warehouse of this company, but at the same time, it does work for it well. You can't, it's not a good idea, in my opinion, to drink some of these New England IPAs too early because then you get a lot of the green hop out of them. This one seems to have aged pretty nicely in my mind. Yeah, that's um, that's a really, really solid beer, this one. It's not the most complex um, IPA that I've come across. You can feel the alcohol in this one a little bit, but it really does work out quite nicely. So, um, yeah, just get this beer for yourself and see what you think. It's a very kind of straight-up IPA. Like I say, Malteri is a fairly new hop to the scene, but other than that, this beer strikes me as being a little bit more kind of... Um, kind of old school. So let's try and break this down a little bit then. So straight away you're going to feel that nice pale malty quality just blanket in the middle of your tongue. As you get further into the aftertaste or as you drink a bit more of this you can feel the sort of wheaty smoothness in there too. Some of the oaty kind of creamy notes are sitting on top of that. Very centre of your palate you've got a nice kind of um, slightly caramelly note to this one. As you move further out from that towards the sides of the palate you get a little bit more of a uh, biscuity, kind of greeny biscuity note out of the beer as well. So quite boozy and oily and caramelly in the centre of the tongue and that will be the 8% kind of showing its teeth if you like. But then it becomes a little bit more um, biscuity the further you come out of the tongue which is it is quite nice. This is where I'm getting the idea that it's more it's a kind of West Coast New England sort of hybrid. It does have a bit of the sweeter maltiness that you would expect of um, of a West Coast IPA. So bear that in mind. I'd be curious to hear the Canadian guys' thoughts on this as to whether they got the same when this beer would be absolutely fresh because they would drink it pretty much straight off the back of the truck. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's a really solid beer, this one, in terms of its malt base. I do like that almost hybrid quality about it. On the hoppy side of things, then, back corners of the palate, you have a little bit of earthiness there. And that does spread forward a little bit, actually. You can 
taste that little bit of earthiness. There's almost a little touch of herbal quality in there as well. But as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, there's a nice little bit of a slightly spicy floral aromaticity to this one. Columbus has this very distinctive spicy note to it and if you've drank a lot of beers with that in it you will notice that with this one. It is quite distinctively Columbus. It's almost a little bit, you know, curryish, aniseedy, something like that. Kind of somewhere in the middle. The spicy qualities out of the, the Columbus are very distinct in this one. But round the very front curve of the tongue, it's actually very, very light and very uh, kind of grassy, to be honest. And that will be a combination of both the Simcoe and the Malteri in there. And behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that little oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And the fruits in this one are surprisingly kind of light, to be honest. You know, when it's grapefruit and passion fruit that you would expect from both of these hops, it is surprisingly light and um, and juicy, which is interesting. Yeah. So for me, there is a little bit of grapefruit there, that oily bubble behind the front cover of the tongue at the back of the palate, there is a little touch of grapefruit in there, but you've got a nice kind of it is mainly passion fruit in this one. As you come further forward towards the front of the tongue, maybe there's something else in there, you know, like a little bit of a kind of pineapple or almost peachy note out of the beer. But yeah, grapefruits at the very back of that oily bubble, passion fruits in front of that, those nice dark tropical fruity flavours. And it's almost just a little bit peachy or maybe even a very a little bit limey as well uh, in the very front part of the palate too. I mean, this is a very kind of straight up double IPA for me, almost a little bit old school. Because, you know, the big, hot, the big hitters in the hop series were always, you know, you always had a little bit of... Um, Citra, Simcoe and uh, an Amarillo. This one's kind of like a, it's almost a little t bit like a, a kind of Simcoe. Um, it's it really, it's almost like Simcoe is kind of the, the, the hop that really should showcase this beer because Malteri in my mind doesn't seem to be that much different apart from the fact it's got a little bit of that darker grapefruit you know and that's the thing that really stands out in my mind is that at the back of the fruity side of the beer you just have that little bit of grapefruity quality so I'll be interested to see how Malteri um, progresses far because the only other beer that I've tried with that in it was a German type beer from Nordic Kiwi Brewers here in Sweden and um, it, it worked out really nicely. I'd be curious to see how many more breweries try and use this one because it, it, it really, in this beer, it just almost gives it the impression of having a little bit of Chinook or, uh, or Cascade in there too. It just adds that little bit of grapefruit complexity to what really is in, in the, on the main side of the site. How do we say that? On the, in the main aspect or for the most part that's what i should say for the most part is a passion fruit beer um so yeah this is mainly a nice passion fruity quite smooth uh oaty new england ipa but it does have a little bit of that almost west coast sweetness to it so it's a really interesting one this but it gets a thumbs up from me i wouldn't hesitate to drink this again but i mean at eight percent it is a little bit of a kind of heavy duty beer in that sense but i like it and i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again and i guess that is the uh, the main thing with this one so yeah have a go at this beer if if you get the chance if you like the galaxy and you like the simcoe hops if you like big passion fruity and more tropically leaning ipas then i think this is one that's going to tick the boxes for you and I'm curious like I said to see how the um, how the, the Malteri hop appears with other breweries and things because this is a, a fairly well known brewery at this point in time so um, yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then I would say that this beer is probably mid bodied um, yeah quite a mid bodied beer this one carbonation is very smooth it's very smooth in its mouthfeel, but at the same time it's got a good oily quality to it, and I suspect that's because of the ABV. There is a little bit of alcohol uh, alcohol warmth to this one down here. I'm starting to feel it a little bit. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness. I think we're talking about 40 IBUs in this case. 
Um, good balance in the malt base between the smoothness and the sweetness. It starts to lean a little bit more towards the sweetness the more and more that you drink of it. Uh, and some nice juicy fruity notes like I was saying, but quite a dark fruity side to the beer as well because it's leaning towards the tropical side of the spectrum. But overall, another very, very solid IPA from Collective Arts. And to be honest, at this point, you're not really expecting anything less from them. So um, yeah, good point to leave it as it, to leave it at that. So yeah, another very, very solid beer from Collective Arts. So for this one, I would say if you like the Simcoe hop, if you like the Galaxy hop, this is going to be one that's going to hit the, that's going to tick the boxes for you. If you like more passion fruity and tropical fruity IPAs, then I think you will quite enjoy this one. So if that sounds like it ticks the boxes for you, then have a go at it. I'm not sure how readily available this beer is still in Canada, but in Sweden you should still be able to get this one through the small parties or the uh, the web shop actually. So have a go at it for yourself and just see what you think. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Collective Arts and I'm sure we'll return to these guys at some point in the near future, most likely for the IPA number 9, which I'm sure will appear in like August or September or something like that. But this one was the IPA number 8, an 8% 8 double IPA with some really nice kind of straight up juicy tropical fruit flavours from Collective Arts Brewing in Hamilton in Ontario and Canada. Very cool to be able to review some more Canadian beer for you here on the channel. But until the next time, slange is now, check out my social media and I will catch you guys very soon. Slange, school, have a go at this beer if you're a fan of tropical fruit IPAs. Cheers.